Hey guys, uh, we want to welcome you back to our, our podcast. We've been doing some really interesting ones. Uh, Ryan and I came up with an idea a couple months ago to do one uh, where we reached out to, to our local high schools and, uh, and just kind of picking a coach or somebody in their community from each high school and uh, and and we're going to like interview them and, and our conversation coach is going to be about you know the impact of, of kids beyond the court or the field in your case the mat and so today uh, I, I got like a, a double honor uh, uh, coach Butch Ross is with me uh, and the reason it's a double honor is because not only is he one of my uh, heroes in in the coaching field but he's also one of my heroes of the faith and so uh, I want to welcome you. And thank you for for being here with me, and wow. uh, and we're going to talk a lot about Jesus and wrestling today. So. Okay, well, I appreciate you even having me. It's an honor that you would even ask me to come. Absolutely. Well, you know how I feel I feel about you, and I want to I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him do something to start with that he's completely uncomfortable with, and that's talking about himself. But this guy's uh, in 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 a, in a couple of Hall of Fames uh, that I know of, and probably one of the, if not the most, he can probably help me on that if he would one of the most successful wrestling coaches in the history of North Carolina wrestling. Uh, beyond that, he has an incredible family that I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about before we start. So won't you tell him about the, the boss, the lady who really runs the wrestling program or has helps him, helps him through uh, the obstacles of life. And then, and then the girls and maybe even the grandbabies if you want to. Whatever. Okay. Well, my wife, Joette, uh, if it wasn't for her, it'd be pretty hard to coach, uh, because she, uh, she kind of handles things at home and looks after them. And then she knows I'm going to be home late and, you know, it's real long time there. And if it wasn't for her, I'd just have a hard time because everything's set up at home. And just like, so and I'll throw this out. And, um, uh, when I get ready for a match, my stuff's all hanging out, ready to <laughs> put on the take. And, and then when I get ready to go to a tournament, we're staying overnight. My bags are packed, and she's a good one. Everything she has, everything just laid out, and it's all laid out in the same uh, order every every morning. It's a family affair. If you go to, a, a, and I have been to a, a West Lincoln wrestling match, you'll have um, uh, if his he's always got a grandkid or or two wrestling for him. But he'll have his daughters. One of them will be running the clock. One of them will be tapping the referee to let him know when, when, the, when the clock's about to run out. They're just all right in the smack in the middle of what you're doing. Right. Well, I'm really blessed. I got five girls, 13 <laughs> grandkids. Yeah. Uh, actually, each and every one of my girls, we run the regionals most every year at West Lincoln, and we couldn't run it without the girls. Yeah. Uh, they all run tables. They all look after everything. And and all I really have to do is coach and, and be the person if uh, – if there's a problem, they can just come to me and right. then, then they go to the head table. But all five of those girls, uh, Heather, Angie, and Elizabeth, and me and Sarah, they all just jump in and run the matches. They look after the clock, they yeah. look after the tappers. And then I got those 13 grandkids and all the girls, they run tables, grandkids, and the boys help tap concessions and and, and, and all that <laughs> and one the and the hospitality room my yeah. wife always runs it for the tournaments uh and it, it was kind of sad this year this is my last grandson wrestling yeah uh chade and uh yeah. he finished second in the state yeah he went ahead in the third period and got caught and pinned in the he didn't third. like that a bit either did he no i didn't much like it either but, <laughs> but uh but it was a blessing to have the grandkids come through and wrestle Amen. for us and you have had some grandkids at one states, right? No, I had never yeah, had it was, one to win. I, one it was close. Hand. I thought maybe one of the other Normans maybe got close a couple of years ago. Well, let right? me tell you, they let me tell you what's happened there. I was this you couldn't write a book about this. When we won the state championship in 2015, it was coming down between us and Newton. Uh-huh. And it was two matches left. Well, it was long before two matches left. And and Hunter was going to be the match that had to win it, my grandson, Hunter Carton. Right. Well, I kept stepping over there to say, and every time I'd step over, he'd say, I know, Papa. And I'd <laughs> say, no, you don't know. I said, you've got to win this match for us to win. And he'd say, I know, Papa. And I went over about four or five different times. Well, when he went out, he wrestled the best match of his whole career, wins the match. We go on to win the state championship. Yeah. Then you fast forward it to 2017 and 
it's, it's we're wrestling Fred T. Ford and they're undefeated. Well, I out coach myself. I, I think I overcoach. I go over to this one kid and I tell him he don't have to pin the kid. All he has to do is win. Well, he wrestles like that and then he loses by a couple points. Mm-hmm. So it comes down to the final match and I have another grandson, Chance Norman, and he's wrestling. And if he wins it, then uh, we're going to win the state championship. Whoever won mm-hmm. between us and four is going to win it. Yeah. And he wrestled the best match of his whole career. Yeah. And he pins the kid from four just like Hunter did in the second period. Yeah. And we go on to win it. So your grandsons actually won you at least two state championships. Yeah, they were the factors. <laughs> they were a big and, factor. And, and I thought one of them is helping you do some coaching up there now too. Hunter, Hunter is. is, right? And uh, Hunter is. And also Will won the grant Carpenter and Chance. Norman and Chade Norman all helped with Top Dog this year. Yeah, they did. And I saw Hunter um, amazingly, which is I thought was really really cool. Is not only does he help with Top Dog wrestling, which for them is uh, is their little kids their youth program in wrestling. Lincolnton had started one because Lincolnton's coach wrestled for you and has built a, a, a respectable program over here now. Uh, but Hunter was helping with our little kids uh, right. wrestling thing, uh, which I thought was really, really cool. So uh, you got a heck of a coaching tree as well. Uh, one of those Brent, Brent Gates I just alluded to was a guy that uh, every time he starts talking about Coach Ross, his eyes light up. And uh, he's one of my good friends. And uh, he's he's the one at Lincolnton now. But I, I just think your influence has been, been been so amazing. But before we get to that, I want to ask you this question because I've been, I've been thinking about it all day. Did – did uh, Tell us about your high school time, your sports. Did you wrestle? I, mean, I wrestled at West Lincoln and uh, wrestled from 71 through 75. And then I wrestled at Appalachian. I wasn't real good at App, but I wrestled at App. <laughs> if you wrestled and, at all, you were good. Okay. And I wrestled from uh, 75 up through 78. Yeah. Uh, there. So, And then you came back to West Lincoln what year? I come back to West Lincoln in 1979 helping coach the middle school, yeah. which was a junior high at that time. Yeah, I remember those days. I was probably actually in Lincolnton junior high when you were doing that. <laughs> right, you would have been. That's right. Uh, in other words, I'm uh, I'm getting old, okay? We, we went to – he coached at a junior high, and I went to a junior high. Right. So, but you, you middle school people don't get that. But anyway uh, – I, I was I was thinking. So when did you start working at the high school? I start. I well, actually, what happened was I uh, I ended up moving when they when they went from the junior high uh, concept to the middle school concept. I went with the ninth graders to the high school. Yeah, but I still coached the junior high or middle school. Middle team. school, uh, right? I coached it for like seventeen years, and I, wow. I took over to varsity in nineteen ninety six. Yeah, from Jimmy Harkey. Yeah, I remember Jimmy being there. I forgot Jimmy about him. Wrestled on the same team. Well, wow. and Jimmy had took over from Wayne Navy, and we were on the same high school team. Right. So uh, the three of us. It's a family of fire up there in West Lincoln. Uh, right. I always say this about West Lincoln, and I think it has to do with the uh, with the community in general. Is that if if you if you go to wrestle them, if you if you go to play them. In baseball, if you go to play them in football, uh, if basketball, if, if it's a cheerleading contest, if if you go to play them in tiddlywinks or jacks, uh, those kids are gonna play you the hardest game you ever played because they don't quit. <laughs> and I think, well, I, I there's one thing you can say about those kids. Yeah, uh, that there's never we're never in a match that I can think of that they didn't think they were gonna win. Yeah, no matter how far down the score was, uh, like when we won it. In uh, 2018, uh, we were behind Cata 30, I believe it was 30 to 3, and we beat them 31 30. Well, so I mean, you, it, maybe, maybe some of that comes from uh, up top, maybe that some of that comes from their leader. Well, I don't know about that. I would like <laughs> to take credit, but but it's pretty hard. To you take may not like they, to take credit, but uh, they just have a lot of heart. I've watched it, and I watch you coach, and I watch how you coach, and uh, and you you know when to to get intense with the kid, and you know when to hug him, and uh, I, th- I think that's pretty pretty cool stuff because uh, you do a lot of hugging, and I, I right. appreciate that as a as somebody that played a lot of sports in my in my in my lifetime. So let me ask you this: so. Uh, when when did you when did you come into a, a depth of relationship with Jesus? Well, uh, 
actually, I was in the seventh grade, and I was at a uh, James Robinson Crusade yeah. at, at Lincoln High Lincoln School. Lincoln High Stadium. School. That's right. And uh, Clyde and, uh, Smith was probably right smack in the middle of that well, one. He could have been. Yeah, <laughs> he I'm loved sure James he Robinson. Was. Yeah, I'm sure he was. Yeah. Um, and my wife wouldn't like me saying this, but I think this is an amazing story. She's a little bit older than me, and this mm-hmm. is a second marriage, but yeah. uh, she's a little bit older. But that night I got saved, which I didn't know her at that time, but she was in the choir singing. Wow. And uh, then I didn't live my life exactly the way it should have been lived. I I've really been there. Pretty wayward. Yeah. Right. And uh, real wayward. And then I came back and. And then when me and my wife got married, I was actually uh, going to the Methodist church at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, But she was a Baptist. And mm-hmm. She said, uh, wanted to go to a Baptist church. And I said, well, it really doesn't matter to me as long as we go. Yeah. But I said, if we're going to go, we're going up to Daryl Balls. Yeah. Uh, Daryl. Lanterns Ford. Daryl yeah. was a <laughs> yeah. uh, he was a custodian at Lovemore when I was first started teaching. And uh He'd always come out and witness to me and talk to me. And, uh, you know, I incredible I, I, man. Yeah, he, he was. And, and I credit him with uh, being the person that it got me back into the right track that Amen. I needed to be back where I needed to be as far as uh, guiding me back. Amen. To where, Amen. You know, repent. Daryl Boss was also uh, an incredible athlete. Probably most people don't know really how good of an athlete he was. And I had the opportunity and the privilege of playing with uh, high school football, basketball, and baseball with his nephew, Adrian Brewer. And uh, and I met Daryl then. My dad and them had talked about him when I was growing up, about Daryl Boston, Daryl Boston. Uh, he was so unassuming, you know, he didn't want to talk about himself. But but one thing he would talk to you about was Jesus. And uh, he became the pastor up at Leonard's Fort, where you're, that's where you're talking about. Where, By the way, uh, my brother over here is now like an associate pastor up there for my buddy Jay Warlick, and so that's pretty. That's pretty interesting. Your your two job titles are wrestling coach and associate pastor. Well, uh, I really think it goes hand in hand. I think that the Lord put every person here to make a difference in the life of somebody. Yeah, and 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 I really believe that you're making a difference, and you're either making a good difference. Or bad difference. Amen. And I think that is what young coaches and and I'm uh, and and older coaches and all the coaches we need to keep in mind that that the impression that we put on these kids, uh, uh, the uh, Nate Carr. I don't know if you know him, but he's an Olympic champion and mm-hmm. uh, and one he's he's real strong in the faith. Mm-hmm. And one of his statements quotes that I really like. As he put, he always said, uh, everybody wants to make a difference, but very few people won't be different. Well, that's good. Do you know, I can remember you, you saying that. And I, I, you know, I can remember every single coach I have ever had by name since Little League football, my first year playing. Well, I, I actually, I, I played one year of, of Little League baseball before this, but my first year of real organized sport uh, was. Uh, we had moved here. My dad was a preacher, and we we lived in East North Carolina. And I got to play about three games that summer in East North Carolina before we moved back here in a little league baseball. Uh, but uh, when we moved back here, I, I remember the first year playing football Boger City, for Boger City Steelers, and uh, I had a, a, a couple coaches that uh, Im- impacted my life. Even then, I was ten years old, and I, and I remember uh, uh, Coach Jack and. And Harold, that was my uh, other other coach, the impact they had on my life, and I can name them all, all the way through high school. And and I and the, and the thing I can remember about every single one of my coaches is the impact that they had. You were talking about the ones that had positive impacts on you, and the ones that because I was motivated by all of them. I was motivated. I was either going because I thought I was going to coach instead of preach, right. and I guess it's similar. <laughs> but I I made. I made decisions with every coach. I, do I want to be like that and influence kids that way, or do I not want to be like that so I can influence kids that way? Uh, right. But but I think you're right, and I think you've had that effect uh, as I watch and as I talk to the kids. You know, like Mac, you know who who coaches at Lincolnton now. When I talk to the kids that were well, young men now that you used to coach, when they talk about you, it, they'll oftentimes 
they're, 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 they'll look off in the distance, and they'll, it's like a, they're envisioning something with you and them and that relationship that you enjoy with them. Uh, and, and I think that's an attribute, that's a, that's a great uh, attribute to, to you, uh, uh, an amazing impact, you know, because what's the point of coaching if you're not going to impact anyway? Right. Well, actually, like you said, you are impacting, but, but you, you're doing it intentionally in a good direction. Well, I, I believe it, and uh, and I and I try to tell young coaches this: you are going to impact. Yeah, and, and 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 whatever way you're living your life is going to impact those kids in that way. And, yeah, you know, and and how many people really and truly ever remember too many of your wins and losses? Well, uh, yeah. Now I still. Wake coaches do. I still wake <laughs> up at night and, and and I wrestle matches over and over and like Michael Rhodes, who was one of my assistant coaches and actually wrestled for me for a while and he helps out with the program. Uh when we lost the bandies match this year, we lost it to them 31 30. And whoever won it was gonna win the state. And uh I bet I've wrestled it a thousand <laughs> times. So I was telling Michael. Uh, Michael Rhodes, I was telling him, I said, Michael, I said, you know, I've wrestled that match a thousand times. And yeah. he looked at me and he said, which made real smart. He said, well, Butch, did it change the score? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but it's hard as a coach. I remember uh, uh, last time we were in the state championship, we got beat by Tarboro. And they had the best uh, high school football player I've ever laid my eyes on, a guy by the name of Todd Gurley. And, uh, and, and, and not many – Sports things will keep me awake. In, in, in fact, maybe even less now than even then. But I can see Todd Gurley running down that sideline every time I go to sleep. For every time I close my eyes for about a month. Uh, but it's true. It's 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 impactful to you. But I, I want you to know that you got the you got the most important part right. You know. And uh, uh, with that said, though, how many state champions have you had? Like I mean, individuals. I mean, how many how many teams state championships? Okay, team was we won it in 2000, 2015, 2017, 2018. We won four. <laughs> yeah. So, and we come in second about five or six times. Ouch. <laughs> Those are hard. Yeah. Sometimes you'd rather come in third. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, we've been successful. It, it really comes down to it's a whole system. It's a uh, it community effort. A community. Yep. It comes down yeah. from our top dog wrestling with with parents coming and and uh, people helping. Uh, it comes down with our middle school, where which Wayne Navy does a great job, and David Avery was there for a while. Now yeah. David's one of my assistant coaches, and he does a great job. And uh, we, as, you know, we've had great people doing the middle school and the top dog. Mm -hmm. and, and so then it all just comes together. That's, the end. that's, that's, that's awesome. So how many individual state champions? Do you have a clue? No, I got a few. I, uh, I'd have to go back. And <laughs> uh, well, we already mentioned Mike. We don't want to talk about him too much. He'll get the big head, you know. But, right, uh, but Mike won it twice. He won it twice. And, and then uh, you had uh, Nathan Hall won it twice. I remember him. Andre. Um, Andreas was my first. No, uh, Rojo was the first. One. I remember that big old boy. And then you know I can go back and look at all of them. And uh, yeah, well, we, the we better let, quit letting you name too many names because we'll get in trouble for mention, right, miss, missing I some of them. A few of them. I already missed some of them. I go back, <laughs> go through the clay. We'll do another. Wire helps over LinkedIn coach. Now. That's right. He's a state yep. champ for so. Yeah. And I know I missed a few, and I can go back through the list. Yeah. We'll have to do another podcast for him to name his state champions, uh, which is uh, uh, quite quite an accomplishment in, in and of itself. And to we've it. had a lot of seconds. And <laughs> that, that, that's uh, hard on them. Yeah, it, I guarantee you it's hard. That's that's the ones that keep you awake. Second place yeah. finishes keep you awake a whole lot longer than the first place finishes will. But anyway, I I, I really wanted to to one my 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 favorite thing about you though uh, is is the, is the Jesus part. I really do. And I, I watched you guys, and uh, over the last few years, I've started going to wrestling matches. I actually watched you guys wrestle twice this year, and uh, I was at the regionals. I went up there and saw you guys up there, and uh, there's there's so much intensity to wrestling. It's it's like uh, I wanted to actually wrestle in high school one time, but my basketball coach wouldn't let me sit. And, and I, I grew up back in the day when coaches would say, uh, no, you're not going to wrestle. You're going to basketball. Uh, and so you just listen and go, <laughs> right. but, uh, but to watch it play out, man, it's like the intensity of it. Uh, 
but the impact, brother, is is that you've had has has been beyond amazing. And, and I don't mean just at West Lincoln. I think I think if you mention your name anywhere in the state of North Carolina, people know not only who you're talking about as far as your wrestling uh, coaching prowess, but I think they also know you as a a great man. And I think that that might be equally important, if not more. And, well. I think it's more important if yeah. they know Jesus. Yeah. You know, or, you know, at least you plant those seeds. That's right. That's uh, right. For them that, uh, you know, like we, uh, oldest move in wrestling is a Jacob's hook. <laughs> uh, y'all probably don't know that, but I always, I have no teach, idea what a Jacob's hook is. Legs, <laughs> there's a move called Jacob hook, Jacob's hook. And I always tell him that uh, Jacob pinned the angel out of it. Yeah, yeah, hey, that's true. <laughs> and I tell him I do know that part. Yeah. Story in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I always tell him he used the Jacob's hook. Yeah, he got blessed. So if they use a Jacob's hook in a map, they'll get blessed. Amen. Too. Amen. You know, so. Well, um, again, I, I appreciate more than than you will ever know. Uh, you you coming by today and just sitting down with me and 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 when I think of coaches in our county that have impacted people beyond the field, the court, or or the mat. Uh, I, I really think of you at the top of my list. Uh, and it's because I've watched you for many, many years. And I don't know how long we've been friends. I would I would say the last 10 years I've really gotten to know you in a, in a, in a different kind of way. But uh, I, I heard about your name before I ever met you. And and when I, when I finally got to meet you and become your friend, uh, uh, it, you were better than advertised as far as man to man and heart to heart, and I, I could not be more proud or of who you are and what you stand for, and and I'm tickled to death that you're one of the guys in our in our county that's impacting our young people that that are going to be our next generation of leaders in this country. You're having an impact on on those young men and those young ladies at West Lincoln, and and I really appreciate that very very much, and uh. It's, that's near and dear to my heart, and I wanted to just personally let you know I love you uh, as a friend and a brother, and uh, and I I thank you for that. You know, well, I love you, and I and I appreciate all y'all do over here, and and what y'all do, and everything you do with the kids, like in Lincoln and other sports where you bring them together and yeah. pray with them, and you know, I I just feel blessed. I yeah. am blessed beyond measure that I was able to be able to be a wrestling coach. Cause yeah. So like I told him the other night at the banquet, that's the only job I ever wanted was yeah. to be a coach Yeah. since I was about knee high. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was to be a wrestling coach. Yeah. Uh, my dad, him and Steve Gabriel, yeah. uh, uh, which was my aunt Betty Ross's brother. They roomed together in college. Well, wow. and when yeah. Steve was a referee, he would come to West Lincoln in the sixties the referee and, and go by to see his mom and dad. And, and my dad would all, Aunt Betty would always call and tell daddy. And so he'd always take me and we'd go watch West Lincoln wrestle. Yep. And then he, him and Steve would hang out afterwards and talk a while. And, uh, you know, I, I just thank God that I was blessed enough to even have the opportunity to coach. Amen. And that Aunt Betty that he's talking about, uh, had such an impact, uh, she's in heaven and as a matter of fact i did her funeral you know and uh yeah. uh she's y'all, y'all most of you guys that they're listening have probably heard of a little place called betty g ross park <laughs> that ain't betty that he's talking about is the lady that park's named after our whole basically our whole youth sports programs she created <laughs> about 95 wow. percent of them yeah. in our in our county yes, not just in lincoln town but in our county right. and uh and that and that same Betty G. Ross, I uh, have the privilege of having her grandson as my as my son in law. Right. So we're almost kin to each other, really. Just about, you know, just about. And we can cons- we consider ourselves brothers, but we really, I mean, we're we're that close to being kin to each other. And by marriage, we'll just go ahead and link it in. How right, about that? That'd so, be good. So, but I, I appreciate you, my brother. And I I love your, I love all your, your girls. I, I, I've I've gotten to know probably. 10 or 11 of your 15 grandkids and I, I think the world of them and I, I just feel like uh, you've had an impact on those those guys he had all girls but he's got a whole bunch of grandsons right. too and he's got some granddaughters that are, are athletes too don't don't get don't get that wrong and one of them probably 
one of them that's in high school now could probably be a pretty good wrestler if she chose to be. <laughs> well, this is kind of strange, but all my granddaughters wanted to wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't let them. And, but they could wrestle each other. Yeah. And, and like uh, Sarah and Mia, they used to wrestle my middle schoolers when they yeah. were over there. And they could actually probably whoop win them. most of yeah. them yeah. because they knew some wrestling. But but all my granddaughters wanted to wrestle, but yeah. I wouldn't let them. But they would. Now, Chloe did. The youngest one right. you're talking about. Yeah. She did not that she's not the youngest one, but she's next to the last one in yeah. high school right yeah. now. Still got Jordy yeah. who, who's coming along. Yeah. She's a cheerleader. I don't yeah. know if she wants to wrestle. <laughs> but uh Chloe uh actually won a couple girls tournaments. Yeah. Uh, well she would have been good. You know, and some girls are in it now more than I thought where I went at the regionals. I saw I think two girls wrestle, and that girl from Bandy was pretty good. Well, actually, <laughs> let me tell you, it's the fastest, one of the fastest growing sports in the nation. Yeah. Is girls wrestling. Well, uh, and actually, they, a lot of colleges are starting girls' programs well, because that takes care of the Title IX issue. Yeah. You can have a girls' team and a men's team. Right. And, and it's that's co- cool. I'm and glad. It covers the Title IX issue. Well, I'm going on my, I'm put, I'll put my money on Chloe because she's a fierce competitor. Oh, yeah. She's, <laughs> she, I think she got what well, MVP in basketball too up there. So she's, she's a, she's an athlete. I, I got to help not much. I helped coach her a little bit in softball when she was in travel a, AAU stuff. Uh, we had a, um, a team that was, that practiced with them a lot. And, uh, man, I loved her heart. But uh, anyway, this whole story is not about you, Chloe, but we wanted to give you a, 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 <laughs> a, a thumbs up. But uh, right. anyway, th- thanks for coming by today, Coach. Okay. It meant I a lot really to me. Appreciate and I appreciate it. I'm praying, a lot to even ask me. Praying, for, praying for West Lincoln Wrestling. And I'm praying for Leonard's Fort. Uh, and especially since you got to keep Jay straight, I'm praying for you all the more. Well, I actually taught Jay in school, too. So <laughs> we won't quite go through all of that. That's right. Jay's his, uh, his I pastor now. a couple years yeah. in school. So. Yeah. Uh, and you know jay he does a remarkable job yeah, he's a good he, man he does a great job at leonard's fork uh, yeah. uh you know he's a, he keeps god first amen and one of my best friends right. uh and in, in ministry is jay i uh, thank the world of him uh and so i think we've covered and gave like props to all all the people that matter uh and uh so i, I appreciate it and we appreciate you guys as usual tuning in with us uh, it's, it's a privilege and an honor so so keep up with us and we'll we'll see who's next we're still trying to f- uh, figure out all of who's next uh, in our interviews on this but but this guy right here uh top of the food chain when it comes to impact and community and i and i'm, I'm just tickled to death we got to sit down with him today and and we'll see you guys the next time